All right, so I've just arrived in Porto, Portugal. Just gonna get my bags and go to the place I'm staying at. It's a cool living place called Outside. And I always recommend people, if you're starting off as a digital nomad, go to Portugal because it's the cheapest part of Western Europe. It's really easy to meet digital nomads and remote workers, but also locals as English is spoken a lot here. And this trip was eventful because I get to Porto and there's a goddamn blackout, which I'll show you later. And then I went to the south to the Algarve in a place called Cigarettes. All right, so it's Friday. I've got up super early and I've managed to get the best spot in the co-work. So let me show you around. This is the outside co-work in Porto. But look at this spot. Like what a cool place to work from. And I used to just get an Airbnb with really good internet and stay there, but I've just learned it's just so much better and you'll, you'll be so much more happier if you just book a co-working space or go to a coffee shop and just explore and get yourself out there. This morning, i um, been working on a mobile app for the last year and finished it all and we sent it to a pen tester, which is basically someone who looks at like security vulnerabilities in an app and he just like tore into shreds. So there's loads of stuff I need to, there's loads of tickets I need to get through, basically trying to fix these vulnerabilities. to work try to get out and explore a bit of Porto and it's definitely becoming more popular now because Lisbon is getting very expensive accommodation wise so a lot of nomads are moving here. It's got some good wine spots by the river but I do prefer Lisbon overall. Tempranillo. And this was the calm before the storm because the next day there was these blackouts across the whole country and we had no cash, ATMs weren't working and also you couldn't pay for anything in card. And we had no food so this could have got really weird really quickly and they thought it might be days till the power came back on. And even weird things like traffic lights weren't working. It's just a lesson to have cash on you all the time and then it randomly came back on in the evening so we we're on this bridge when it came back on. <laughs> And then thank God the ATMs just like booted back up and we could actually get cash and get real food. And yeah, shit could have gone south really quick, but it was okay in the end. But yeah, always have cash on you. Okay, welcome to the Algarve. And I think this is one of the coolest spots I've ever worked from. It's just so beautiful. Let me give you a little tour. So I've got a massive balcony. It's massive. Um, this is the work setup. That's my personal Mac. That's my work laptop, headphones. Got the iPad as well. And it's just, this view has been so nice to look at. And after work as well, I've been running around here so to these cliff tops here and it's just the views are so nice 
and it had a pool as well and a co-work downstairs. And if you do want to stay here, I do have a code. It'll be in the description where you get $50 off your stay. So check that out if you want. And this was one of my favorite nomad spots I think I've ever been to because I just slowed down so much. I run literally every day and it's just a nice sleepy place to go and just to kind of like relax. Um, so yeah, highly recommend it. So this is the current view. And I used to watch these kind of videos on YouTube of people who used to work in tech. And I always was a bit confused as to what they actually did. Like what they actually do, what kind of tasks do you get? So I'm gonna like talk you through a task I've been given this week and how I've solved it, all right? So I do basically full stack in design. I work for a small company and I do a bit of everything. And this is a great example of a task I've been given. Um, Sometimes I'll get a Figma design. Sometimes like this week, I have to make the design and the UX. So they will tell me the problem and how I'll have to build a user interface and do a little bit of the back end, a bit of the front end and design to build it. And this is what I ended up building in this is fake data and a fake UI, by the way, but it just shows it's like a grid with users. And then you have like different groups, which these users are assigned to. And they'll give you these requirements for a startup and then you'll have to build it. So this was like a mini little crud app basically. Um, but working for a startup, you'll do the requirements will change and also you'll work across the full stack and sometimes do design too, which I do like. Thank you. 